morning. I'm AJ Hilton. Happy Friday, friends. You're watching CBS News Minnesota's morning update. Grab that coffee. Let's get you up to speed when it comes to your news and your weather. Let's start talking weather because we want to let you know we are tracking some showers in our forecast today. Make sure you go ahead and grab the umbrella. Have it handy. You can see at noon the temperature expected to be 65 degrees. Matter of fact, I think we've already hit our high temperature for the day. So you'll notice temperatures, they will steadily fall throughout the day. 45% chance of showers and then at 4 p.m. it pumps up to 50% and look at that temperature. It continues to drop 63 degrees and if you've got Friday night football again, you'll want the umbrella or have the poncho handy. 50 degrees, excuse me, 50% of chance of showers. 61 degrees will be your temperature, but again, make sure you are prepared because it is expected to be a wet afternoon into tonight. All right, let's go ahead and get to it. It is finally Friday. I don't know about you, but we're feeling great. So we wanted to know on this feel good Friday. What do you have planned this weekend? Did you have something good happening to you this week? We would love to hear from you. If you're watching on Facebook right here, leave a comment. Want to hear about Feel Good Friday. Let's get in that mood here and boost up the positivity levels. So uh, as we always do, we're going to read through some of your comments in just a few minutes. Let's get you caught up on your news headlines because we are continuing to follow the latest from the UK after the death of Queen Elizabeth II. Buckingham Palace says she died at Balmoral Castle in Scotland after a 70 year reign. We know the crowds are expected to keep growing in London as Britain is now on a 10 day mourning period for the Queen. And when you think about it, for many, she's the only monarch they've ever known. I mean, she was 96 years old. Think about the number of prime ministers that she has worked with in her lifetime. She was surrounded by her family, including her son, now King Charles III. The Queen is expected to remain in Scotland over the weekend before her body is flown to London where the public can pay respects while she held no formal power, her impact and presence. I mean, really, it's felt all around the world. And for Brits living in Minnesota, it was a day to spend together. Some of them gathered at Brits pub after the news of the Queen's death broke. Amazing Grace played on the bagpipes and just in just a second here, you'll see that followed by the toast to King Charles here, the bagpipes that I was just talking about. We spoke with Rob Church, who got a voicemail from one of his mates that he served with in the military. She's crying, sound like the boss is dead. Because like when you go in, everybody swears an oath of allegiance to Her Majesty. So we've, we've always seen her as like the top, the top person. We've seen her have kids, see the kids get married, see her have grandkids. Um, so she's really become a part of, uh, I think, not just British people, but, but, it, but in my sense, just a, just a part of my existence. Not only a part of your existence, but just a part of, of, of culture. I mean, she's been along for so long that she's become a, a part of all of our culture. So King Charles III, the Queen's son, has ascended to the throne. He's 73 years old. And remember, next in line after him would be Prince William and then his son, Prince George. Our coverage of Queen Elizabeth's death will continue all morning here on WCCO. And you can always get the latest on CBS News Minnesota as well. Well, back here in Minneapolis, the Southwest Light Rail Project, it is far behind schedule and way over budget. And lawmakers had the chance to grill the Met Council about the reason why. This is a project, if you're not familiar, that connects Minneapolis and Eden Prairie. It was supposed to cost around $1.25 billion. Well, now it's coming in at more than $2.7 billion. A legislative auditor report found complicated construction plans along the route was a significant part of that increased cost. Lawmakers said the Met Council should have been more prepared. I dispute the argument that any of this was unexpected. Um, uh, to the extent that anything was unexpected, it's because it wasn't examined and studied as closely as it should have been. The project is set to be completed in 2027. It is being funded largely by the federal government and Hennepin County taxpayers. An Asante hockey dad convicted in a brutal cold case murder will be sentenced in court today. Last month, the jury found Jerry Westrom guilty in the 1993 murder of Jeannie Childs in Minneapolis. We're also getting our first look at the evidence that helped to convict him. Take a look at all of these boxes. They contain all of the evidence, articles of clothing, a comforter and towels where investigators found Jerry Westrom's DNA. 
The jury listened to testimony and saw evidence in the Westrom trial for eight days. And the jury foreperson told us that Westrom's guilt really came down to three things, a police interview, DNA, and a bloody footprint. We know that Westrom again will be sentenced later today. Now let's move to safety on the football field because here's something you may not have thought about. The supply chain crisis, it is extending to the high school gridiron. Teams across the country, including right here in the Twin Cities, simply don't have enough helmets as the football season is underway. One of the teams is Eastview down in uh, Apple Valley. They're going to be taking on Woodbury tonight at 7. Every player will have a helmet, but the thing is, they won't all match. What Eastview and many teams across the state have done is share helmets as they wait for their own supplies to arrive. So this is the supply chain issue we're talking about. Eastview says on average the team orders a couple of dozen new helmets a year. And it could be because a certain size they need or a helmet needs to be replaced for safety. Normally, they put in their orders in February and it arrives before the start of the season. But with the delay because of supply chain issues for two years now, they are going to a temporary fix. Schools across the state are now trading helmets for the sizes they need. The school's assistant athletic director says the pandemic has really taught coaches to be flexible, to be creative, and to remember the true meaning of sportsmanship. Football coaches are amazing. I mean, they really are in that um, they're intense, they're competitive people, obviously, on and any time they're going to play a game. And yet, they also keep the better, the bigger picture in mind, I guess, of, of trying to get kids playing the sport. And if that means we'll give our helmets to to Eden Prairie so that, you know, we can get some from Egan, then so be it. And listen to this. Eastview is still a couple dozen helmets short for the season, but there really isn't a timetable as far as when they may arrive. The assistant athletic director says deliveries have been sporadic. We did check with the major helmet manufacturers for an update, and we did not get a response back. In more high school football news, we are continuing to follow the story of the Bloomington Jefferson football player paralyzed after a tackle just last week. Yesterday, for the first time, the Jefferson ninth grade football team stepped onto the field without Ethan Glenn. But part of him, his jersey number was still there, number eight. You see it? We got you, eight. Still a lot of emotion from players on both teams at the game. They're playing with joy in their hearts. Um, but they're going to still struggle. And uh, this isn't a one day thing. It's not a one week thing. You know, this is something that they're going to go through for quite some time. And in the latest update, Ethan's parents say they got his pain under control with some med adjustments, and he has been able to take in sports highlights and a movie. We know tonight family and friends are calling for a Friday night lights for Ethan. They are encouraging people to leave a light on for him tonight and Honor his love of sports by leaving a football, maybe a hockey stick or baseball glove by the door. You can share your photos using the hashtag WeGotYou8. For the fourth year in a row, WCCO teamed up with Excel Energy for their day of service. And not only is it for a good cause, but we had a lot of fun doing it too. Volunteers packed 1,300 hygiene kits at Surly Brewing for the group People Serving People at the kickoff event. Our WCCO family took part in helping out. Those kits will be donated to people experiencing homelessness. Nonprofits in Minnesota and Wisconsin will hold day of service events through Sunday. And not only that, we made it easy for you to find ways to volunteer at WCCO.com slash day of service. There are so many opportunities to get out there and help someone. And the best part of maybe you help someone, but then you feel good about helping out too. So make sure you check out our website. Let's get back to today's talker. Speaking of feeling good, let's see what you're saying when it comes to feeling good. Bradley says, planning to go to a Twins game Saturday with my brother-in-law and nephews. Should be a perfect fall-like evening for baseball. Also, NFL season is back. Go Cowboys. How about them Cowboys, Bradley? I hear you. Diana says, we finally got our third floor outside trim painted and done. Thank you, family. Well, I'm glad to hear that that's done. Uh, more comments. Melanie says, kids started school. <laughs> I hear you, Melanie. I hear you. Todd says, one of my best friends is visiting from Ohio. Haven't seen her since we both lived in California four plus years ago. We'll definitely be visiting the Minnesota Zoo and the Mall of America. Hope you have fun, Todd. That should be a great experience. Denise says, my son and daughter-in-law found out that they're having a daughter at the end of January. 
first granddaughter for me. Well, Janice, congratulations, and congratulations to your son and daughter-in-law. Definitely some feel-good news on this Friday. That is your morning update from CBS News Minnesota, your only local streaming news source. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here same time on Monday. Have a great weekend.